Hey up everybody, welcome back. All right, today, as I mentioned in the last video, we're gonna do the wheels. So we'll start off putting the uh, bearings and what have you into the hubs, and then we'll build up the brake plates because they actually all come apart, so you'll see that. Then I won't spend too much time, in fact, I won't spend any time on lacing and truing them because when I was building the trials bike, there was a complete video basically on wheel theory almost I got carried away and I certainly show you the way that I lace them up and true them so I'll uh, I'll put a little note on for you to see which actual video it was so you don't have to go searching through them but I think with the trials one it actually said in the uh, in the oh god Michael you're getting old in the little display originally you know it said part so and so and I think it said wheels Okay, so let me bring you in close and we'll start with the front wheel. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got one hub. As I say, this is the six inch dual sided hub. So there's a brake plate on each side. Obviously we have a wheel spindle and the end field, oh, excuse me, look. Not properly dressed. Oh, and I had a comment that said that the uh, the brown coat was getting nicely run in, which I think is a polite way of saying it's absolutely filthy. So, I'll maybe get it washed today. What was I saying? Wheel spindle. Oh yeah, this one is has got two shoulders for the bearings to go up against because it's a captive spindle. It stays in the hub. Then we have two bearings, two new bearings. Uh, let me see if I can get them out of the box. Whoa. They're all stuck together. Take my word for it, there's two bearings, you'll see them in a minute. Then these have two little spacing pieces which go on and they actually fit inside two felt washers. Two felt dust things which go in. That's basically to keep the grease, because they go on like that, that's to keep the grease from the bearings going into the brake drums and getting on the brake linings. So the first thing we're going to do is put the bearings into here. Now, I'm going to do it on the press and I'll show you that. There's a couple of ways you can put them in. You can press them in or you can put them in and just very carefully tap around. Really would be good if you could see a bearing, wouldn't it? Excuse me. You know, when I was very young, I actually went to teacher training college. Darlington Teacher Training College. I was going to be a biology teacher. And then I discovered that I didn't like children. So that rather put the, uh, the kibosh on that. But one of the things I do remember from that is being taught that when you're doing a presentation, you have everything ready. Even down if you're using a slide projector to having somebody ready to switch the lights off so you didn't have to walk through the class. Anyway, more trivia. So what we're going to do is we're going to press that bearing into there. Now as I say, you could press it in, you could tap it in very gently, or you could use a drift and bang it in with that thing. The one thing you do not do is bang it in there. So in other words, don't use the wheel spindle to bang it in. You've got to be using the outer race. Because in a ball bearing, the thrust is designed to go that way not that way. So the only thing that's holding this inner to that outer is the fact that the balls are in little grooves. So you start smacking on that centre part and you're going to destroy the bearing. You even want to try hitting the outer race when you're getting them out. Unless of course you know for certain you're changing them and then it doesn't matter because you're going to throw them away. So what we're going to do is we're going to press one in one side, then we'll put this in and then we'll press the one on that side and that'll be the hook done. So let's go across to the press. So, got the uh, hub in the press, put our bearing in, get it as level as we can, then we put a piece on it so that, as I say, we're pressing on the outer race, not the inner race. Close the release valve so that we actually pump some fluid. There we 
a go. Don't you hate that? That's gone in nice and straight. Now then, this burn is actually going to go in a little below the level. So what I'm going to have to do is find a piece that's the right side, well the same diameter as the bearing to press it all the way in. So let me find something of a suitable size. That would work except for the fact that as you can see for some reason it's slanted so I have to turn that down a bit. Oh that one. That one I think is just right, <laughs> but as you can see it won't fit in. Now let me turn you off while I drop this. Alright, here we are, back again. Now we've got a piece in, it's the same diameter as the bearing. That's actually really want it to be fractionally less because you don't want to push this in and have it in as tight as the bearing is. You've got to be able to take your drift back out. So. so there we are, down to the shoulder in the hub. As you can see it's it's now in below the level of there. That's where that felt piece is going to go and the little spacing piece to bring us all out to the right height for the brake plate to go on. So let's uh, get the other bits. Okay, so now we've got our wheel spindle in. So you'll notice of course that now I can't just use the flat piece so I'm going to have to have a piece that will go on like that. So we'll put our wheel spindle in, we'll put our bearing on and before anybody mentions it uh, I will be greasing these bearings. Okay, so this is going to be in sort of two or three stages. We've actually got a, I don't know if you can actually see there, but that is pushing the spindle down a bit. There goes the bearing. I think there we're down to having the spindle poke out through the top. Yes we are. So now we need another little piece. Actually an old bearing will do here. See that one will slide on a long way so we don't have any problem with that sticking. The reason I'm doing it in these couple of stages is just so I don't have to keep dropping and raising the cross piece in, in the press here, which is a bit heavy. So we'll go down You could use of course a longer piece of tube but then I wouldn't I maybe wouldn't quite be able to get it in in one. So let's just do it a couple of things like this. All right. Okay. 
Okay, that's down tight on that side. Now what might happen sometimes is because it's obviously a good press fit onto the actual shaft, onto the spindle, you may push it out the other side a little bit. So just to be on the safe side, we'll give that a little push again. And then we'll know we're nicely seated on both sides. Now let's see if this does go down at all. Yeah, maybe an eighth of an inch, so it did. had pushed it a little bit, but not much. Right, so that's that bit done. Let's go back over to the bench. So I've uh, packed them up with lots of grease, both sides. Now, as I say, what goes in there next? There's a little spacing collar whoop, on either side, which goes on. Put plenty of grease in here because this big um, felt washer here is going to hold it in and it's going to push it into the bearing. And these open bearings, you want to grease reasonably regularly because, you know, the grease can get through. It's not as if there's a shield or anything on them. So then that goes in. And that fits right down inside of there. The little ring we just put on, uh, being the thrust face for the inner race. And that is the hub done. So now we can lace that up and true the wheel. But we'll finish off this uh, front wheel by putting the two brake plates together because as I say, they come apart completely. So we'll put that to one side, get the brake plates. Now we'll only do one brake plate because obviously the two are identical. And I shall sit down for this. Okay, so there's brake plate. Now, it's that sound like a broken record, but Enfield really did think a lot of things through. And instead of just having the, uh, the brake cam stick through a boss cast in that, they actually have the equivalent of the boss as being separate and bolt on. And you'll notice it's a loose fit. But you'll also notice that the holes are slotted. And that's so when you've got it in, you can get it exactly centered. You've got some movement there, which is all very nice. So that goes on there. And then we have two bolts that hold that on. And duh. It's funny, you know, but I remember more French now than I ever did when I was at school. One of my few claims to flame, flame, claims to fame at St Mary's College Grammar School for Boys, where I went in Middlesbrough, was I think, if I'm not mistaken, I had the lowest ever mark in a French examination. 7% springs to mind. Okay, so I'm not going to tighten those up completely yet, otherwise it would make the adjustable ability pointless. So we put that through, it's been greased, brake arm will go on there, lock washer nut, it's 7 16th BSC, but again I'm not going to put that on yet because uh, I want to know where to put this more when the, the wheel is in and I see where I want the brake plate to go. Now the other thing of course is the pivot. So that's going to go in there like so. Big washer. Big nut.
this nicely grabs so you don't have to try holding anything on the back of it. So there we go, ready for brake shoes. So we'll put a little bit of grease on the pivot. Now of course you've always got to be moderately sparing with the grease because you don't want it to find its way onto the brake line in itself but as none of these things are actually spinning it's not likely to get thrown off into the brake so we just put something there like that get some more grease make sure that turns so nice new brake shoes Just make sure I don't have any grease on my fingers. Now then. Brake shoe springs. Let's see how these go on. One top, one bottom. I.e. the hooks. One is pointing one way, one is pointing the other way. Now you can get clever gizmos for uh, spreading brake shoes. I hope this is all still in, in camera. But, oh dear man. Excuse me for a moment. Alright, I'm back. That was my wife. She's going down to North Carolina from upstate New York via Philadelphia. The flight to Philadelphia was delayed because of mechanical problems, so she missed a connection. So they put her on the next flight and they all boarded, they all went out onto the runway and then it got brought back because that plane had mechanical problems. That's why I don't like flying anymore. Anyway, to come back to this, you put the, uh, the springs on and then you put your shoes on like thus. And you do that. Voila! And there's your, uh, your shoes on. Now the, uh, the end field has little grooves for the shoes to go in. So just make sure they're seated on those. And there we are. One brake plate ready to put this on when we put it in there. So I'll pop them on there so I don't lose them. Actually I'd lost the nuts but fortunately I had some 716 BSC. Oh here's the thing. Right hold on a second. You will remember that I lost the um, the steering races for the headstock and I'll search and search and search and search for them. Well I was looking for something else the other day and I had my box here with electrical things in it and I just sort of said huh electrical things won't be there and then I thought to myself what's this great big steel bush spacer thing in here and when I took it out bingo they've been right there all the time well fortunately I have another Royal Enfield frame for a later project which doesn't have them. So I would have had to buy new ones anyway. But there you go. See? Things always turn up. Right. So, as I say, to the brake plate is just the same. So I won't bore you with that. And uh, I'll put it together and that will be ready. So what I'm going to do next is lace this up put it in the rim and then we'll come back well no we won't come back to this because this will then go to one side until the tires arrive uh, next thing we'll do is we'll put together the rear hub which you may remember in fact I'll show you it it's basically the same Bum, bum, bum. 
but uh, this goes on to a separate brake drum. So these little nubs are for, they go into a cush drive on that side and uh, speedometer goes on here and there's a little plate. So this has got two bearings in it the same, in fact you can see I haven't even knocked them out of there. One side they're held in with a circlip or a snap ring as it is here. So we'll, uh, we'll knock those out in a minute, I'll show you that and then we'll, we'll build this hub. But now it's nearly lunch time so I'm going to have some scran. See you shortly. Now the rear hub is a little bit different because this has got uh, a through spindle. Now you remember with the front wheel we had a captive spindle and it had two shoulders on it because with a wheel the wheel spindle is held in position and it's the wheel itself via the bearing that spins on that fixed spindle. Now in order to do that you keep everything through that centre line rigid so the, the spindle is bolted in and then whatever is on the spindle as a spacer presses onto the inner race on both sides. So obviously you can't have something just pressing on those inner races with nothing in between because as I said about taking them out there's nothing actually holding the inner race in except the balls in the grooves. So what you have for this axial thrust is you'll have whatever's on this side pressing on the inner race then something carrying that thrust through to the other inner race and then on out to whatever it is whether it's forks or swinging arm that's holding it all in. Now in the front wheel you remember the spindle has to say had shoulders on it so they carried the thrust through but when you have just a through spindle that you're going to take out you need to have in effect a piece of tube in between. Now the normal way of doing it is the tube is smaller than the hole it goes in and it'll have a little collar on it at some point so that it can actually tilt and what you'll do is you'll get in with uh, something like a long punch and get it to tilt slightly and then you can hit on the bearing. Now you're going to be hitting on the inner race then so basically it's going to be for changing bearings but the end field again is slightly different and I did get slightly carried away and start working on it. I mentioned that there was a, a circlip in one side which I've taken out. Now if there's a circlip in it means that the bearing will come out that side because the circlip is there to keep it in. In other words there's not some sort of shoulder. So to get this bearing out Enfield have put a slightly different spacing piece in and when you look in you'll see that the spacing piece instead of being a solid piece of tube has two notches in it on either side and those notches are there so that you can get a punch in. And I've already started knocking these out so let me continue going from side to side so that we're getting it out evenly. I'll make sure I've got enough space under here Do this. Let me make sure you can still see. Yep. Okay, there's our little notches. There they go. So there's the spacing piece, and there you can see the notches. So when we put this back in, we've got to make sure that it goes in with the unnotched end to the bearing that has the circlip. So you take the circlip out so the bearing's not held in then you can drive that out. You'll also notice on this side actually we've got some uh, some little collars. So as I say normally what you would find is there'd maybe only be one of these in the centre so you could just knock that over to one side and then you can get through and hit the bearing race. So I'll just drive the two bearings out and uh, put them back in and that is this hub done. Then we'll look at the, uh, 
the brake drum and sprocket which goes onto it. Now the Enfield uh, rear wheel has the QD type hub, quickly detachable, so that you can take the wheel, which would be attached to this hub, out of the frame without disturbing the brake plate and therefore the brake rod and everything and the chain. Now here's something actually unusual which uh, if any of you know the answer you can give me a comment. I haven't had a chance to speak to uh, Hitchcock about this but all the Enfields I've seen and in fact looking at the parts books the brake drum and the sprocket were always one piece which was annoying of course because when your uh, sprocket wore out it was a whole new brake drum. But this one is a bolt on one. Unusual. That'd be just for the American market, I don't know. Anyway, so what we have here is, as I say, a hub basically the same as the front hub. We've got a bearing in both sides, only this time we have our spacer to keep them apart. Then we have this piece. Now this would have the brake plate on it and it has a bearing that goes in there and then this bearing supports this. Now this end with the flat on here is the usual piece that's going to go through the swinging arm. So that's going to bolt in there. So when all that's together, that is just going to bolt into the swinging arm and stay there like that. Now the Enfield has cush rubbers inside this. It's got a cush drive to take up the uh, the sudden jerk of, of the chain when you're putting it into gear and when you're accelerating things like that. Now you take these off and this whole cast piece here will come off and you can get at the cush rubbers. Now they're a bit uh, difficult to get off and you can, I don't know if you can there, you can see the cush rubbers in here and you can check to see what they're like. Now these are nice solid, I say this bike's been in storage for ever, I mean about probably about 40 years. So the cush rubbers are solid, they haven't started to go spongy, they haven't started to dry out and break up. They're really nice, so I'm not going to disturb it. Now, you see here we've got six holes in this. So this part here is fastened to the brake drum through these bolts. So there's our rubber, our rubber is between them. Between the bolt and these, the bolt and these. So that when the wheel gives a jerk like that, or the chain gives a jerk, the wheel itself can move on that, and that's the cushioning effect. So what we have for this, the BSA ones for instance, have a spline inside there. Inside there would be a spline, and on this would be a suitable male spline. But the Enfield one is different in that it has six nubs, and those six nubs that to roll away, fit into those six holes and that connects the wheel to the fixed brake drum. Now when this piece is in here, that way, the wheel spindle will come through the wheel into that and screw in and there you have the wheel supported, swinging arm, swinging arm, like that. Take that out, pull it out, this here would have a nice big spacer on this side so that there's enough room to pull the nubs off and take the wheel out. So I'm going to put the bearing in here, it's very similar to the front, there's uh, the bearing goes onto here, there's the same little spacing piece and a nice felt washer to keep the grease in and then this screws in to the hub. It's a, bit a bearing retaining uh, plate that screws in with a little pin spanner. So let me put that together and as you can see give this coat of paint and then we can go to see about fastening this complete unit into the swinging arm and while that's happening I'll build up the rear wheel. Now here's a little extra for you and bear with me while I get things in focus here. There is what the spoke should look like and there 
is how they came 90 degrees so what I'm going to have to do is as I mentioned in uh, the wheel building video all 20 spokes got a little plate with a hole in just the same diameter as the spoke and these are butted so they're quite strong you put it in that catches the head of the spoke then you can bend the spoke till it's the shape you want it another annoyance well the tires didn't arrive even though I paid extra to get them delivered on a Saturday and uh, I haven't finished painting the rear brake drum so I know you might ask why didn't I paint it when I did all the rest but, but I put it to one side and then completely forgot about it till the other day so um, I want to get a video finished for you for this week so I'm going to knock off here but uh, I wanted to just show you a quick little something I keep trying to show alternative methods of things, uh, particularly things that don't require special tools. I'm lucky I have the lathe and the mill and everything. So uh, you may remember the the wheel truing stand that's just a swinging arm in a little base, nice and easy. You know, you're absolutely certain everything is square and true and what have you. But sometimes you come into things like uh, this one, where I have a a wheel that's got a through axle. I've just got two or three different size axles. <gasps> Beg pardon. Wheel spindles. Uh, I have two or three different wheel spindles. So I can manage to, to bridge across. But this actually is a Yamaha 650 swing arm. It's quite wide. But with uh, the fixed spindles, like the Enfield front wheel is, they sometimes aren't wide enough. So I've got to make up a little thing for each side. But in the meantime, just to show you that you should never get stuck, let me show you what I've done for the uh, for the Enfield front wheel. So let me walk across you and just swing you around here. I think that's the easiest way to do this. And there it is. BSA B40 frame. The swinging arm in that is just about right to fit it. So I had a frame, I just grabbed it down, stuck it on a box and there we go. So a uh, little bit of uh, Yorkshire ingenuity. There's a phrase there, but I can't remember it. Anyway, uh, until I talk to you next time, enjoy yourselves.